So, um, your first track was a banger, and uh, now let's uh, listen to my first track. I um, I did mention that this one, when you hear it in the game, it's quite like, um, you know, there's a build-up to it, right? There's a real build-up to it. And okay. in the OST version, it's lacking that, which I think is a big shame. It's a big part of why this hits. Wow. Yeah, uh, it just it just starts a full pelt immediately. But I I still quite like this track anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'd like I'd like your objective opinion on this because uh, in the game it's super cool. But I don't know if it if it works as a standalone piece of music. So, I was about to know. say like it seems to be my expertise to have no context whatsoever. There you go. Because I mean I think that, I think it's probably the most used word in my comment section is. Context. <laughs> like, context oh this doesn't hit the same moment. well of course it doesn't but anyways let's uh, let's jump into it um and yeah let's let, let's see how you like it one <laughs> two three go whoa <laughs> right very like euro pop isn't it oh dude i love stuff like this <laughs> Same it thing, builds huh? up to this. Oh, I can already see, like... If it builds up to this and this is the climax, that's pretty yeah. big. Yeah, because th this like... Okay, I I'll tell you the a bit of the context. This is in a club, like a nightclub. And before, you can hear the boom, boom, boom in the background. And you're running up to this and this gets louder and louder until you go down the staircase and you open the door and then boom, this hits. So um, it's really well done. Hmm. It's not what I had in mind. Oh, that right there. I love that. Oh, nice. It goes down. Yeah. Oh. Man. This is one of your best submissions yet. Oh yeah? I'm dun, glad you like oh, it. And it's catchy too. Dun, 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 dun. Super electronic though. <laughs> I love I love those drums. I know, right? A little solo, maybe. Mm. Whoa. In the game, in the game, you never actually hear this part. You never hear this part of the song because you only hear this for like 20 seconds as you're passing through a nightclub. So you never hear the oh. full breadth of the song. What a shame. I know, right? Unless you stand still, maybe. Yeah. You can't oh, no. can stand still. What a travesty. Right? Like the um, Sonic Generations music you, you, you played a, a few mm. weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Damn, dude. You're telling me I could be missing out on that <laughs> by blowing through the right? part that quickly? Right? It's a it's a recurring theme that happens in the game, but it only you you only hear it for like a minute, maximum a minute and a half before it yeah before it goes it away. Sounds like it sounds like paper, like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's getting chaotic. Throwing everything in the mix. <laughs> yeah, it almost sounds like sloppy in a way. Yeah, I know. Just everything in there. Oh, 
Dude, this is... It, it is a bit all over the place. It almost feels like two different songs at this point. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Sick ending. <laughs> and there you go. Dude, so, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, again, you got to hear it within the context as well. But um, I mean, listening to it by itself has some pros or some cons. You don't have that build up, but you actually hear the full Jeez. width of the song. So you're, so you're saying that this builds up, but you only experience a tiny fraction of it? Weird, right? That's such Weird. a travesty. I know, I know. It's um the game it comes from is super weird as well. It's like I'm not even trying to guess. <laughs> so if if I told you um the composer Masafumi Takada, uh, they I are. I feel like I heard that before. It's a composer at Grasshopper. So Suda Fifty One. Not ringing any bells. Is this game set in the 80s by any chance? Not really. It was released in the early 2000s and the time period is a bit ambiguous. It was released initially on the GameCube. It's by Grasshopper Interactive who make weird shit like the track, uh, you know, like, like No More Heroes, uh, okay. 1, 2, 3. That's what they're most known for. But this, I think, is actually their best game. Um, and it's a game called Killer7. I, mm. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a story-driven on-rail shooter, and you, you press a button, your character runs, and then you can aim, and you shoot these invisible enemies who explode when they touch you, and you can choose between all these different personalities because you're playing as a like a schizophrenic or something. It's bizarre. The story is bizarre. Everything about it is bizarre. The soundtrack is bizarre. That's what Grasshopper does. They, they, they're they known for just making weird shit. But I think this is, sometimes they're accused a bit of style over substance, but this, mm -hmm. this, um, this really hits home. I think this is probably their best game. Just on a side note, how, how is the game? Is it good or is it? It's different. Um, I, I like, it, you, you'll, there's nothing out there like it, which is why I think you should play it. How did you hear about this? I feel um, like this this is like one of those things you either see the box art and you're like, ah, eh, what the hell, or someone tells you about it. You know, like you stumble uh, upon it. We we talked about that golden area of video games, like where 3D was just becoming a thing, like that. You know, the mm -hmm. like this came out around PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, where I think that was a that was like such a fascinating period because you could see that games were in this really nice middle point where like they had a they had a decent budget to them but mm. they didn't they didn't feel focus tested they weren't like your ubisoft's mm. open world you know like where all the the corners are rounded off to appeal you know appease as many I people totally as possible know what you're talking about yeah right but they still had a real budget to them so there was still like um you know they could really pursue some some wild ideas and play and the other thing is because i think you know playstation 1 and n64 developers were just getting used to um 3d graphics and it was it was um an interesting time but you could tell it was a formative time but with the playstation 2 and whatnot a lot of those games still look fantastic today when upscaled because mm -hmm. yeah you can see developers were getting to grips with 3d but it also they weren't aiming for photorealism right they were instead mm -hmm. really focusing on art direction and mm -hmm. um just pushing their ideas to the limit and um yeah this is a game that's so typical of that era it's so like has a real punk rock ethos to it like yeah let's just try anything we want and see what sticks and it's I, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend playing this game. There's nothing else out there like it. No one would dare to make a game like this again. And mm. um, it has, like, it'll stick with you. And that's why we consume art, I think. I mean, it's something that will stick with you. Uh, it's strange, it's weird. It's not entirely good all the time, but it, it is something you should experience, I think, if you have the time. It's not particularly long either. So it's kind of funny that, like, the first episode, we had these kind of similarities where I think we chose the same composers or we, we had something. I don't remember what it was, but we had something that was, like, very strikingly similar. Mm. I think we both chose well, whatever it was. But we've had these kind of, like, matching energies, which I think is kind of funny. And then in this one, yeah. I start off with this completely unknown random 
game with this crazy song and then you do the exact same thing <laughs> <laughs> right back at me kill a seven with what's it called what is the song called this song is called rave on honestly i'm not gonna lie like that was really really damn good and when you hear it in the game itself it's just unforgettable like like the first time i heard this track within the game like yeah that's gonna stick with me the rest of my life just the fact that you said that it builds up to that that makes it like 20 times better but it does sound kind of really unfortunate that it just you don't hear most of that apparently because that was four or something minutes yeah yeah it's what it's a waste. what happens is like 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 every level you're in at the end of it you start hearing this boom, 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 like this this echoing like like mm. you know like when you're entering a nightclub and you go down the stairs that, yeah, yeah the, right okay yeah um and, cool. you hear the, and then you these doors swing open and then that hits you in the face right and then you trudge through this nightclub and it doesn't take very long uh if you just if if you if you try to breeze through it you know less than a minute right and um you, it's, it's a recurring theme in, in the song but you never hear the full breadth of it which is sad because it really that's goes for so, a few different motions that's such a bummer i, I feel i don't want to say insulted but if i was making this soundtrack and then like i play the game myself and i find out that's where it's used and that's it i would be kind of bummed just yeah, because of how like that like just the coolest stuff was at the end <laughs> I know. like the uh that was percussion i've never heard before that was like something very far in the background of the microphone like yeah either either like wood hitting the floor or like i said paper or something kind of yeah. like that um there was a chaotic jumbled mess at the end there was that really cool ending where it just went like mm -hmm. there was so much to miss out on i know and it sounded fantastic i know that was cool that was cool as hell <laughs> that's such a that bums me out I hope we get to play the game someday. Uh, again, like I still think it's worth playing today because I've again, never heard of it. yeah, yeah. So th this track, okay, I'll, 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 I'm not gonna describe it too much. I actually think the song, the song is more funny than anything. <laughs> so uh, okay, but so like, uh, like Skull Monkey's funny or some other kind of funny, if you even want to consider that funny. That was funny, but maybe in a similar sort of vein. I mean, um, okay. just to give you an image before we go into it. I, I once saw a YouTube comment describing this as a pug lying down on the floor, blowing into a trumpet. <laughs> just, it, it's it, so specific. Very specific, but you'll see it when you hear it. Um, okay. One, two, three, go. God, I can't get that image out of my head. It's, I mean, it's cool as hell, but... Honestly, I kind of love it. It's got a noir kind of vibe to it, but it's oh also kind of funny. Stuff. Start. 
<laughs> well, so, I definitely didn't get like funny from that. I mean, I guess if, with with what you said, but I think again context because the game is a noir mystery, but it's also a comedy. It's also like it's so, and when you when you hear the context in which this is played, it's like a guy in a wheelchair with a gas mask speaking in riddles in the middle of a like. A 60s diner it's it's bizarre right like the, again like the last one i played um the killer seven this is a this is a weird little cult classic um, where do you find these games are you i like little cult <laughs> classics <laughs> what's it called it, uh it's called deadly premonition and it's, and it's a song called what underground underground and mm. th- this this track plays a lot um during these sort of investigation scenes now um like the the director of this game or like at least one of the writers or the masterminds behind it is Hidetaka Suehiro or Swery 65 so Grasshopper you have Suda 51 and uh, with this you have Swery 65 I, I sometimes get a bit jumbled in my brain because they, they both make these sort of weird cult classic games <laughs> that just have a, have a very specific atmosphere to them and um, what people people always make um, links between Deadly Premonition and Twin Peaks. I don't know what Twin Peaks is, but I know it's popular and it's a name I've heard a lot. So Twin Peaks is a TV show by David Lynch. Um, it's set in a small town. It's about like a murder mystery, but because it's David Lynch, it's very sort mm. of unorthodox and it's well directed, but it's also got this sort of campy daytime TV like drama-esque vibe to it, which is partly intentional as well. Uh, and this this game, Deadly Premonition, nails that atmosphere. Again, it's an atmosphere that's completely unique unto itself. Um, it's not a very good game, but that's also sort of part of what makes it so endearing and fun. Um, it's definitely like a game that is completely... There's nothing else out there like it. Same as Killer Seven, right? And I recommend it for that for that reason. They did try to make a sequel to it, Deadly Premonition Two, and it felt sort of like trying to capture lightning in a bottle twice, and it didn't quite hit home for me. You know, um, it felt a bit synthetic, honestly. But I, I do need to give it a bit like another shot. Is this like a visual novel? What do you think? Or is there like is there voice acting here? There is voice acting, yeah. It's sort of like, it's it's an adventure sort of mystery game where you go around and you sort of talk to people and you look for clues. And it's got these really janky shooting sequences, which are just a hilariously janky. The game is like, it's really, really funny. Partially intentional, partially unintentional. Intentional, there's clearly like it's an oddball. Everyone talks like they're from a different planet, right? Is it like satire detective stuff? Partly, the uh, like the main character, like he's got this thing where he sort of reads his fortune from a coffee, uh, from a coffee cup. He he puts milk and coffee in them every morning, and he he reads his fortune from that. And he's constantly talking to himself. He's got this like other mind. He's got this other personality, uh, like and he's constantly like putting his fingers to his brain and and talking to himself, and like in front of other people, and people don't question it. Or sometimes they're like, okay. So, like, it's got, it's partly intentional humor, partly unintentional. Another super weird game, which which I'd recommend you play just because it's so unique. Seems to be a pattern here. Uh, yeah. With both of your, <laughs> with, uh, the, what was it, Killer7 and this one with the whole uh, deadly oddball premonition. type of. But what's funny is that, like, uh, the reason I asked if it's satire is because the music didn't really sound weird or kooky or anything. Like, it sounded very serious and, like, cliche-type detective sound with the, the horns and the droney detective work. I was getting that feel a lot. I wrote down that it's it sounded kind of noir, spy, um, that kind of thing. But also, I, I, I really was, like, seeing, like, text on the screen. That's why I asked if there was uh, voice acting because, to me, it's it's, like... I totally can see a visual novel there, or just. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, 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 again, it, it does heavily lean into its its noir influences, and uh, they, they juxtapose this almost 
almost stereotypical noir sound with like the most ridiculous situation you're in. Like, is the song it, name referring to setting? No, it plays quite a lot throughout the game. And I'm curious because I associate that music with like these ridiculous funny scenes. So like listening to it in isolation, yeah, it, it yeah, just hits. I would have never got that. I was just like, oh yeah, this is suave and <laughs> cool. Like, what are we, what are we looking for? But it was just some guy in a wheelchair and a <laughs> mask and like these just jelly and sandwich. Yeah. Um, so it's super, super weird. It's super, super weird. And um, the whole game is kind of like that atmosphere. It's just this oddball kind of. <laughs> bizarre atmosphere <laughs> play it if you can someday is this one where like it was multiple composers or did one person do the whole soundtrack multiple composers and i don't know which one who did this one there are three different composers on this game so i, I, I was gonna say because those are it was all over the place that was a lot to yeah. take in just that three minutes oh yeah wildly disparate sort of genres i mean i i can if i had to name the composers they are uh Ryo Kinugasa, Takuya Kobayashi, and Hiromi Mizutani. So I don't know who did that one. Alrighty. Well, yeah, two oddball picks from me and two pretty <laughs> sick picks from you. Like, I, uh... The movies are great. Uh, um, what was the name of the FPS again? I need, I need to track it down. So, to recap, it was Viscera Fest with The Looking Glass. Uh -huh. and then then you had... And Lost Odyssey. Killer. Killer, Killer 7. 7 with Synth Club, which yep. sounds like... Oh, no, no, sorry. Rave, Rave On. Rave On. Rave On, yeah. We um, lost Odyssey with Never Ending Journey. Ending Journey, which is a... Yeah, a, sounds like the perfect title for the premise and of the game. And Deadly Premonition with Underground. Yep, yep. Uh, quite an eclectic little mix there, but um, I, I certainly fun. enjoyed my... It is always fun. It is always fun. Uh, thank you for the excellent picks as ever, my dude. Thank you. Likewise. Until yeah, next time. It's until next time, my friend. Uh, we'll yeah. see you uh, in the next one. See you in the next We're one. Swapping Cheers, tunes. All. On swapping tunes indeed. See you all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then head on over to Jesse's Auditorium for more. We split up all these episodes between our two channels. Cheers all, and catch you there.